What's your cup size? I'm sure this isn't a question you get often, but the answer is really important if you want to achieve a good fit on the garments that you create. Keep watching to discover three ways to determine your cup size and why one method might work better for you than the others. I'm Alexandra Morgan from In-House Patterns and In-House Pattern Studio. I create digital sewing patterns and teach experienced sewers and budding pattern makers how to make and adjust patterns for fit and style. You'll find loads of inspiration and insight on fitting and pattern making at inhousepatternstudio.com. Before we dive into the three ways to determine your cup size, let's talk about the theory behind cup sizing. So the theory goes like this. Each cup size represents a change in breast size or bust projection of 1.25 centimeters or one half of an inch. In our little sewing world, this means that the front bodice width and length must increase or decrease to accommodate the various cup sizes. Now, if your cup size doesn't match that of the sewing pattern, you will need to make a bust adjustment. In order to make that adjustment, you'll need to know your personal cup size. I'd like to share three methods to determine your cup size and provide some insight as to why one method might work better than another for you. Now, in order to follow along with each of these methods, you'll need to take four body measurements. The high bust measurement, the full bust measurement, the under bust measurement, and the bust cup depth. So the first measurement I want you to take is the high bust girth measurement. This is the measurement that goes directly under the base of the armhole, above the bus, and completely around the body as you see it here. Now across the back, it usually is about an inch higher than your actual bust level, but don't be concerned about that. You want it to be straight across the back the measuring tape should be level with the floor across the back and then hit the base of the armhole on both arms and be above the bust, okay? So that's what you're looking for with that measurement. The second measurement I want you to take is going to be the full bust girth measurement. This one I know you're familiar with. So all you need to do is take the fullest point of the bust, put the tape measure all the way around the body, and what you want to make sure is that it is level with the floor all the way around. Now the third one I want you to take is the under bust measurement. The under bust measurement is indicated here with this yellow tape and it's just going to go under the base of the breast here all the way around the body and this is going to take your basically your rib cage measurement. This should also be level with the floor when you're taking this measurement. Now the final measurement I want you to take and make sure that you do, you are wearing a really good fitting bra, make sure it's an unpadded bra. You're gonna measure from your bust point to the base of your breast where your breast meets your rib cage. This is going to be measured parallel to your center front. So even though it looks like it's kind of floating in toward the center on the camera, it is definitely parallel to center front. It's just a visual effect that we're getting from the camera. This is your bust cup depth, measure from bust point to the base of your breast at your rib cage. Now the first method is one that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. This is the method most sewists have become accustomed to seeing. For this method, you will take your full bust girth measurement and subtract your high bust girth measurement from it. Your cup size will be chosen according to that result. A 2.5 centimeter difference will give you an A cup. A five centimeter difference will give you a B cup a 7.5 centimeter difference will result in a C cup and so on with each cup size increasing by 2.5 centimeters or one inch per cup size. If your result lands somewhere between the measurements given, simply round to the nearest number and choose that cup size. Now this method will work well for many, which is why it's become so popular. But if your back body is more rounded or more muscular than average, you may find that this method doesn't work very well for you. In that case, I'd like you to try method number two. Now in this method, you will use the full bust measurement and the under bust measurement. 
first you will need to consider your under bust measurement. Now if that measurement is an even number, you will add 10 centimeters to it. If it is an odd number, you will add 12.5 centimeters to it. If your under bust measurement lands between an even and an odd number, use the whole number, that's the one before the decimal, as your guide. Once you've completed that calculation, you will subtract that result from your full bust measurement. The final result of this calculation will reveal your cup size. Now a 2.5 centimeter difference will give you an A cup. A 5 centimeter difference will give you a B cup. A 7.5 centimeter difference will result in a C cup and so on with each cup size increasing by 2.5 centimeters or one inch if your result lands somewhere in between those measurements given simply round to the nearest number and choose that cup size. Now this method is a little less popular as of late but may work better for those with a more upper rounded back but if your back is broader or more muscular than average you may find that this method is a little suspect too. Now if you're feeling a little unsure of the results of methods one and methods two I would like you to try number three. Now method number three uses just one measurement the bust cup depth. You'll remember that this measurement is the distance between your bust point and the base of the breast where it meets the rib cage. A measurement of 6.5 centimeters will indicate an A cup. 7.5 centimeters is a B cup. 9 centimeters indicates a C cup and so on with each cup sizing increasing by an average of 1.25 centimeters or one half of an inch. Now once again, if your measurement lands somewhere in between the measurements given, simply round to the nearest number and choose that cup size. This method, in my opinion, will give you the most accurate read of your actual breast size because it measures the actual breast and is independent of any other body parts. However, for this method to work, you need to be wearing a supportive, well-fitting bra while taking this measurement. So now it's time to compare the results. Did you get the same result for all three methods? or did your results vary with each of the methods? Now, if you had varying results, don't be concerned. We are all so incredibly unique and bus cup sizing is absolutely not a perfect science. Since linear measurements do not indicate shape, the calculations can be affected by the amount of support your bra provides, the distribution of measurement around your body, as well as your posture. As a result, some of us will need to experiment to discover our perfect bust cup size. Now, if you're still not sure what cup size to choose, here's my advice. Gauge the results of these calculations against the cup size of your best fitting bra. Make sure it's an unpadded bra. If there is a large discrepancy between the calculations you've made and the bra cup size that you wear, choose the average of the two and test a sample. A quick sample will tell you instantly if you are on the right track. Now I know that I have shared a ton of information with you in this video. So in order to make it easier for you to put what you've learned into action, I've created a free downloadable worksheet for you. I want you to go to inhousepatternstudio.com forward slash cup size to get your copy. Once you've determined your bust cup size and made the appropriate bust adjustment to your patterns, you'll be one step closer to your perfect fit. I hope you found the information I shared with you helpful. I'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.